so this is you. You've watched the first part of a video, which you should first do so by the way, and you've dropped out of school. Listen to Hidolimbo Envy for 20 hours a day for JPEG on a mobile game. But something is still missing. You still can't get into top 50. Why is that? Because you have not optimized your strategy. So let me introduce myself. My name is Project Sergei Tryhard69, and welcome to Advanced Event Hearing 101 for the big guys. Prepare to use your monkey brain, and let's talk some real hardcore tiering stuff. So in the last video, I talked about that for basic event tiering, you need crystals, a good team, and a lot of time. But that is still not enough for you to smash into the big leagues. So let's start with team composition. As stated, these are the basic requirements. Always remember to prioritize event bonus over power. But now, let's come to more specific card skill. Let's go to your tier list because we all love tier list. First of all, unit scorers. These cards give extra score boost when there are certain characters in your team that belong to the same band. For example, we have this brand new ring card in the Japanese server, which gives 100% score boost as base, and then additional 10% for each Wonderland Showtime card in your team which is very useful for band type events. And then we have life scorers. First of all, we have a base boost, then bonus boost according to your health. So this card will benefit in combination with healers. So for example, my favorite Miku card, if you have less than 800 health, then the score bonus is 90%. But if you have more than 800 health, then the score bonus goes up to 120%, and it will increase by 1% for each 10 health that you have, and it goes up to 140%. A tier. Then we have B tier, perfect scorers. They give bonus for perfect notes and none for great good bad notes. As simple as that. C tier, normal scorers that have a fixed amount of score boost. They usually have a smaller percentage than the previous cards, but you can get these cards very easily from permanent gadgets. So they will properly form the bulk of your team. Then we have perfect lockers. These cards transform bad and higher notes into perfects, which is pretty useful for full combo. But the score boost is rather minimal compared to the aforementioned cards. So stick with normal scorers if you can. D tier. And then we have E tier, healers, which gives the least score boost for 4 star cards. But in cheerful carnival events, it might be useful, but I'll be talking about why a bit later in this video. Lastly, we have F tier. If you don't have 4 star cards, just use 3 star or even 2 star cards. Always remember that event bonus takes priority over team power and skills. But of course, don't replace a 4 star card with a 2 star card if it's only like a measly 1% extra event bonus. It's not worth it. There is also one more type of 4 star card, which are accuracy scores. These cards require you to get all perfect during the skill activation. Otherwise, the score boost will drop less than a 3 star card. Unless you can make sure that you can AP even after 8 hours of spamming Kitolimbo Envy, don't use this card, it's not worth it. F tier for normal players. S tier for AP gods. Now you figured out your team. But how do the factory rankers actually rank? In the last video, I said that you should join the multi room on Discord with 4 other strangers, spam the same song over and over again. However, the top top scorers have an even more sophisticated approach. Okay, so in the high tiering multi room, first of all, you have the ranker. This person is the actual ranker going for like top 10. Then, we have 4 other support players in the room. These support players prioritize band power and they generally have higher scorers on the team with their best skill cards. The ranker can benefit from the skills and enjoy a better score and thus, more event points. The support players can play without bonus energy and they are usually there just to help out the ranker. The ratio though is not limited to 4-1, it can be 3 support players, 2 rankers, or 2 support and 3 rankers. You get the idea, it's very flexible. The situation is a bit different for Carnival. In these events, the event points are calculated off your final score, but there is also an extra portion of the event points that is based on the player's remaining health. If you have like 1000 plus health, then you receive a bonus event points that is equivalent to 1 million score on the song. This is why support players and cheerful colorful events will also bring in healers in their team. Additionally, there is an extra mechanic in cheerful carnival, which is matchmaking. If the room is full of 250,000 band power players, 
The matchmaking system will take a long time to find opponents with such high BP. As such, there is something called a sandbag, in which 1 to 2 support players would use level 1 4 star cards with a max level 4 star leader, something like this, which can help to enhance the matchmaking speed. The most ideal average power for all players would be around 180,000. The ranker, however, should still aim for 250,000 band power. Same with marathon events. Then we have room order and ISV. So apart from team composition, another important concept for high tier ranking is room order. So in multi rooms, you have five spots. The order of players in these five spots does matter to a very minimal extent, but every bit counts. Let's begin with marathon events first. In the player's team, we have the leader and four other cards. Let's use my team for example. First, note down the leader score bonus percentage on the left side. Then, add up all bonus percentage of all five cards, including the leader to the right side. Now you have your ISV, which means the internal skill value. Then, figure out the ISV for the remaining four players. Let's go for something like this as an example. The third step is to organize all the players from lowest to highest by the first number, and then by the second number if there's the tie. So something like this. In each song and for each difficulty within that song, there's an optimal skill order. By reordering the players and timing how skills activate during the game, we can guarantee the best score output. Let's pick everyone's favorite song, Hitorimbo Envy. For Expert, the optimal order from highest to lowest goes like this. For Masters, the order goes like this. So it's a bit different. Let's take Envy Expert for this example. The highest ISV player goes to the fifth spot, so Kanade will be at the last spot. Then, the second highest player will go to the fourth spot, which is Mizuki. After that, the third highest, which is myself, will go to the first spot, and I'll also be the room leader. Then, the fourth highest player, Mafuyu, will go to the second spot. And lastly, the lowest player, Enna, will go to the middle. So the final room order will be something like this. Confused? Let's try another set. This time, we will have more more jump members, each with a different ISV. Again, we will rearrange them by ISV from lowest to highest. Let's go for Melt Expert this time. The order is 35421. Pause the video if you want to try it out yourself. Okay, now let's figure out the room order. The highest goes to the third spot. The second goes to the fifth spot. The third player goes to the fourth spot and so on. There you go, very simple once you get the hang of it. Cheerful Carnival again though, it's a bit different. The room order should be this one. It is not really necessary to get that order, but you should make sure that the ranker is in slot 1 or slot 2 to maximize the scoring efficiency. The last concept on scoring is called Encore. Encore refers to the 6 skills proc within the game. In single player solo mode, your team activates their skills in a random order, with the leader of the team activating during the fourth skill proc. In co-op, for both events marathon and cheerful carnival, the player with the highest score within the room activates the sixth skill. For some songs, this sixth skill encore is very important in determining the score. As a ranker, you definitely want a support who has a much better skill cards and band power to encore over you. This can be achieved by the support player having better cards, or play on a higher difficulty in order to take the encore. In some songs like Hitorimbo Envy, encore is worth a lot more than the first 5 skill procs, so when you're coordinating your multi room, you should make sure a support player can take over the encore of the ranker, even if it requires the ranker to drop down their ISV. Then, let's talk about solo versus multi life. Multi life is better for rankers because you get to use skills from other players. So, just go and play multi-life. However, for a cheerful carnival, since people disconnect every single damn time, it might be more time efficient to do solo mode. But just stick with multi-lives, it won't hurt. Finally, some additional tips. If you're from other servers, you can always take a look at the results of the Japanese servers as some sort of benchmark for you to plan ahead. As stated in the previous video, Tsukasa, Rui, Mizuki, Akito, and Naikodo events takes the most time. 
so make sure to save energy drinks way ahead of time. Lastly, super high ranking tiering is a long and tedious process, which takes more than 8 hours. So my point is take care of yourselves and really, just go touch some grass. This is the end of my event guide series. If you want me to make a video on any topic about Project Sekai, leave in the comment section below. I'll be making even more videos every 1-3 to three weeks. Go subscribe and goodbye.